So here's example two in our partial fractions topic. This is the first time we're actually going to use uh, the technique of uh, the partial fractions algorithm here. So what we're trying to do is write in partial fractions this uh, rational function here, 4x plus 1 divided by x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 2. I can put down the side here just the different processes that we're going to do in order to solve this problem. This is what we call, what I would call type 1 in that when we look at this rational function here, the denominator is already factorised, x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 2. These are two different or distinct linear factors. So this constitutes the first type of uh, function that we're going to split up. So what we're going to have a look at here is if I write down 4x plus 1 over x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 2. Then the first thing that we can see here is, if we have a look, I'll put a wee bit of highlight out. The first thing we're going to do is to split into fractions with constants on top. Now what that means is we have a, a general form that we use for this. So we're going to split it into f as many fractions as we have distinct linear factors on the denominator. So in this case, I've got x plus 1, and I've got another fraction, x minus 2. And we just put a plus sign between them for just now. And the constants, there's going to be a constant value in each. You might think because there's an x term on, on the numerator that somehow there needs to be an x term uh, in the final numerator. That's not the case with these ones. They are going to be constant values. And so we can just put a constant there. We tend to use capital letters at the start of the alphabet. So I'm just going to put A and B as my constant. So that's how we start off the process. If we look at the next uh, comment down, it says multiply both sides by the denominator. And the denominator uh, in question is the original one, x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 2. So what happens with this is that if I multiply through by x plus 1 times x minus 2, then clearly the denominator disappears on the left-hand side, and I'm left with the numerator 4x plus 1. If I multiply this fraction, the first fraction, by x plus 1 times x minus 2, then what happens is we're effectively... Uh, simplifying it by dividing through by x plus 1. They cancel out, if you will. So we're left here with a multiplied by x minus 2. And if we do the same thing for the second fraction, then in this case here, the x minus 2 terms uh, simplify, and we're left with b multiplied by x plus 1. A slightly easier way of thinking about it when there's only two fractions is that the constant terms effectively are multiplied by the other factor than the one that's on their denominator. But it's good to know why that's the case. So I've done the first two stages. And then the last stage here uh, that I've written at the side, select values of x, which will eliminate one unknown constant. So if we have a look at this equation here, the first one on the right hand side is a multiplied by x plus x minus 2, sorry. Now if I select a value of x of 2, then the number in the bracket here, 2 minus 2 is 0, that whole term is going to disappear and I'm going to be left with an equation with just one unknown, which will be the value of b. So I'm going to write here, when x equals 2, and we work out what that is on the left hand side. And I'm just going to take my time to explain it first of all. So if I substitute x on the left hand side, that's four lots of two plus one. On the right hand side, um, all we're left with, we know that two minus two is zero, so there's no a term here. And we've got b multiplied by two plus one. So on the left hand side, that becomes nine equals 3b. 
3 through by 3, we can see that B has a value of 3. I can repeat that process by choosing a different value of X to make the B term disappear. And if I look back up at B times X plus 1, if I let X be negative 1, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, 0 times B is 0, that whole term is going to disappear. So I'm going to select a second value for x, and that is negative 1. So on my left-hand side, I've got four lots of negative 1 plus 1 equals. This time I do have my a term. I've got negative 1 minus 2. And I'm not going to write down my b term because I know that that all is going to equal 0. What have I got on my left? I've got negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3 equals negative 3a divided through by negative 3 we've got a equals 1. So by carefully selecting uh, values for x that suit us we can in turn uh, eliminate one of the constant terms a or b and therefore we've got our two constant values we can say that the original fraction 4x plus 1 over x plus 1 x minus 2 is equal to, well I started off with my two fractions as x plus 1 and x minus 2. On the first fraction I put the capital letter A and we know that A is 1. So I'm going to put 1 instead of A and the second fraction the numerator was B. We know that B is 3 which means that I have gone from writing my rational function here to my partial fractions on the right hand side and that means I could go on and use that for integration purposes or, or whatever I need to simplify it. So that's how we do partial fractions with distinct linear factors in our original denominator.